There we go. I will now turn it over to my presenter who will talk about logarithms today. Now logarithms, when we're talking about logarithms, it's sort of a, a hidden thing. Um, we won't actually get into uh, doing dealing with the logarithms yet. Uh, tomorrow, we will have class tomorrow um, from 8.30 to 9.15. We will have a scheduled class because we have material that we have to cover. So at 8.15, We have class Friday from 8.30 to 9.15. That will be a scheduled class that we will actually get into the, the idea of logarithms and working with logarithms. Uh, so I will send an email out to this also uh, to make sure that we're all on board and uh, we can get a lesson in the class in tomorrow. Uh, once again, we, we will have to accelerate just a little bit just because there's information that we got to cover. And our break was, our, our first semester was sort of shortened at the beginning of the year by a week. So we've lost a week and this has lost another week here. So um, we'll make do with what we have to do. Uh, today we're going to start with an exponential function and we're going to look at graphs of functions and look at the idea of a translation and how we can utilize translations to be able to uh, help us and assist us with respect to our graph. If we have a function e to the x, if we have the function e to the x and I want to graph e to the x, well, if I want to do a table, which is fine, I can do my x values of negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now my e function, when I talk about e, e is e is defined as Euler's number, but of course we are American and how we are hooked on phonics, we will say that's Euler's number because we're American and how we pronounce things should be the right way we pronounce things every time. Um, but if you live in Germany, and that's where this gentleman's from, um, in Germany the EU sounds like an OI. So this is really Euler's number. Euler's number is a constant just like the value of pi. If we calculate the value of pi, that's 3.14157182818281828 and some change, and it keeps on going forever. If you look at E, which is Euler's number, this is approximately equal to 2.718. And if you look at your calculator, on your calculator, E is your second function to, I should grab my calculator here. E is the second function to your division sign. So if you hit your second button and your division sign and hit enter, um, you get 2.71828. 1828, and you look like, oh, it's a following a pattern. Well, it does not follow a pattern after the uh, 1828, 1828. So it continues on indefinitely uh, without any definite or without a pattern. Uh, but this, we approximate Euler's number to be 2.718. And that's fine to be able to approximate it that way. So if we look at the function and we could take e to the negative first power, okay, well, I could say it's 2.718, but if we take a look at your ln button on your calculator, your ln button on your calculator, the second function is e to the x. So you have e to the x. So I can have my second function e to the x and type in negative 1, close my parentheses, 
and get a value of 0.37. Then anything to the zeroth power, anything to the zeroth power is going to give us what value? That's our property of mathematics and exponents. Now, if I take anything to the zeroth power, what do we get? 2 to the 0, 5 to the 0, 7 to the 0, 10 to the 0, e to the 0, x to the 0, y to the 0, a dog to the zeroth power. What do we get? I'm sorry, what did you say again? Is it one? It's a value of one. That is correct. My volume wasn't turned up, so I couldn't hear you. So if we take anything to the zeroth power, if I take dog, if I take cat to the zero power, I still have one cat there. Okay? I have still have one cat. So anything to the zeroth power is a value of one. And then e to the first power is, once again, 2.718. Then we could take e squared. about 7.4 and then e cubed we get 20.1 and I don't think my graph is going to be able to hold e cubed so we will just utilize these values at this point I'm going to go out every every two let's see two four six eight I'm going to count by twos here so it's going to be four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen. 1820 by 224. So if I plot these, this graph, if I have zero or if I have negative one, I'm real close here. Then I have 2.718 for zero. At one, I'm sorry, at one, that's my bad. At zero, we are at one. At one, we're at 2.718. Let's see here. At two, we are at 7.4. And at three, we are at 20.1. If I would take e to the negative second power, I get 0.13, which gets me closer here. If I would take it to the negative third power, we get 0 0.05. If I take it to the negative fourth power, I get 0 0.01. What is happening here along my x-axis is we are flattening out here as we get closer and closer, as our, our values get uh, bigger towards the negative way. Which means if I take a look, what can we say is true, or what could we call the x-axis here? What would be able to what would we be able to call the x-axis? Because if I take a look at my graph, I'm going to come down through here. It's going to curve, and it's going to flatten out here. What do we call the x-axis? Hmm. What do we call the x-axis if it's a, something that we flatten out on? What do we call that in the previous section? Abby Snyder, what do we call that? The horizontal asymptote. There you go. Very good. That's a horizontal asymptote. So we have a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis.
or y is equal to zero. So it's going to become asymptotic to the x-axis, but then it's going to curve and exponentially grow. And we will never cross the x-axis. Very good, Abby. So let's take a look now. That's, this is the base function of e to the x. Now if we take a look at negative 3 plus e to the x, do you remember what occurs when I have this constant being added on? What do we call this value here? Well, if you want to, in our calculator, if we don't remember what it is, in our calculator, let's see, that, let's go to this. Um, let's go to my y equals, and let's type in our e to the x and our y1. And if we look at our graph, oh no. Let's do something here. Window. Zoom. Let's go six. There we go. That one's a little better. Sorry, I have my statistics in there. We're doing our one tail, two tail test, fond memories. So here's my graph of e to the x. In y2, let's type in. negative 3 plus e to the x. So we have negative 3 plus e to the x. And we take a look at the graph of this. Okay, there's my e to the x, and there's my negative 3 e to the x. What we call what is occurring to our graph here, when I add that negative 3 in there, what do we call that? Mm, uh, Brooke, what do we call that? Do you remember? Uh, is it like... A shift. <laughs> it's a shift. That's correct. And what type of shift is that? A vertical shift. A vertical shift. What Do you remember what we called that vertical shift? Not really. Not really. Not really. Preston, do you remember what we call that? No, I don't know. My guess was a shift. A too. shift. Okay. And that's correct. That's what we described it as. Does anybody remember what we called it as? Anybody? Pipe in. It was a shift. Translation. Translation. Very good. Very good. Who was that, Noah? Yeah. All right. Very good. So we have a vertical translation. Of negative three which means it's a slide of every point down three spots. So we can count down three spots to three. Oh, let's see, that is two, that's four, six. So everything would get shifted down three spots. So that's a two, that's a three here. Three here, three here, three here. Okay, we would be here. Everything gets shifted down three. So we have let's see, two, three, here, two, three here. Along with this, rather than y equals 0 being my horizontal asymptote, we'll have a horizontal asymptote 
at y is equal to negative 3. So we'll get an asymptote here at y equals negative 3. So my graph will look very similar, but everything gets shifted down three spots. There's two, there's three. So we have a horizontal, our vertical translation of three downwards. When we have the x, or e to the x minus 4, if you type that into your calculator, what type of translation do you have with that one? Good, type it into your calculator. What happens with our graph? of e to the x. We have e to the x minus 4. Jordan, what happens to our graph in this one? It's a horizontal translation of 4. That's correct. We're moving four positions to the right. So every one of our points that we have of our original graph, we have to move over four. There's one, there's two. So we have one, two, three, four. Everything gets moved over four positions. One, two, three, four. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong point. I'm having a tough time today here. So we go one, two, three, four. That point goes there. This goes to negative or over to three. This point goes over to two. Uh, this is a one, so we have to move this one to five. This one gets moved over to six. Out. So our graph, once again, will maintain our y horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, but now we have a horizontal translation of four. What we're trying to deal with here is basically what happens to our graphs. Um, to me, I'm, I'm not a huge, once again, as I talked about before, I'm not a huge translation person. Uh, and reflection person, just because I think there's other ways of being able to graph these things now, especially with the usage of our calculator. But it's still important to be able to point out different things that's going to occur um, with a graph. Um, if I have e to the negative x, we have no translation, but what happens with our graph with e to the negative x, and then what happens with 4 plus e to the x plus 3. Go ahead and write down what occurs with your graph for those two. For the first one, f of x equals e to the negative x, what happens with that graph? Mickey, what happens with the graph of e to the negative x? It reflects across the y-axis. Okay, you have a reflection about the y-axis. And if we take a look at the last one, if we take a look at the last one, Angelique, what happens with the last one here? Uh, one second. It's not wanting to work on my calculator. All right, that's fine. Preston, do you have it? I'm still putting it in the calculator. 
I'm sorry, I'm going too fast, that's fine. I'll slow down. It uh, vert kind of vertically translates it and horizontally. Yeah, you have a vertical translation of how many upwards? Um, four. Okay, you have four upwards and then a horizontal translation of what happens with this x plus three? Uh, three, it go three, right? Three to the, if you remember. Oh, right. Yeah, three to the left. We have x minus a negative three. Whatever you're subtracting from the value of x, that's going to be your horizontal translation. And once again, I, I translations and reflections and, and being able to pick up on these things was very big back um, back in the old days um, because we we did not have the usage. You did not have this to be able to go to. You just had to look at characteristics of the equation to be able to get your graph down. Now, when we have our graphic calculators, we can pick up a lot more of this information uh, by usage of the calculators. But it's still nice to know some of the characteristics that we have with respect to how was the translation, how does the translation work, and what's it look like within the equation. And once again, any exponential equation is going to look like what we just had with the E function. Okay, when you're dealing with an exponential equation, all exponential equations will look very similar. Because anything to the zeroth power, any constant to the zero power is going to be a value of one. So we are guaranteed that we're going to go through this value of 1. And most of your exponential equations will look very similar to being asymptotic to the x-axis and go through the value of 0, 1. Now, when you start throwing some translations in there, it may be a little bit different. Um, but if you have some base equation, c to the 0 or c to the x power, x power you're going to get an exponential equation. And we could go through the exact same thing here. Um, we have a vertical translation of negative 2 and a horizontal translation of nothing there because we're not subtracting from x. Uh, horizontal translation here of negative 2 because this is x minus a negative 2. Here would be a reflection still. And the last one would be the same vertical translation of 2, horizontal translation of 1. And those are just looking at characteristics of the equation. And what I may ask you to do is just look at what type of translations. I may give you an equation and make... Uh, what type of translations would we get from that, and maybe put a second graph down with those translations to them. Main emphasis that I will go through today is how can we solve some exponential equations? Okay, how can we solve 5 to the x is equal to 25? If we have an equation x squared is equal to 25. We could solve that easily by just taking the square root of both sides and say x is equal to positive or negative 5. If I had x cubed is equal to 125, we could take the cube root of both sides and take the cube root of 125 to get a value of 5. So when you have a variable that's in the base and you have an exponent there, we could take the root to be able to solve. But the problem we run into is when we have 5 to the x is equal to 25. 
there's nothing in our calculator that, that will allow us to calculate by taking the x root of 25 and solving for the value of x. So we have to find some other methods of madness to be able to solve this. If, let's see here, x to the a equals x to the b. Then, a must equal b. And that's the key idea to remember here. If you have x to the a equals x to the b, you have a like basis. If we have a like basis, then their x and we have equality of these two alike bases, then their exponents must be equal. If x to the a equals x to the b, then a must equal b. Well, our goal in solving these exponential equations is to get a like basis. If we have 5 to the x, what we look to do is we look, and I know you could probably solve this problem by just our knowledge of mathematics and what what you've experienced throughout your mathematical career. But we're going to take a look at this a different way because not all of them are going to be as easy as this. How can we write 25 as a base of 5? 25 would be 5 to the what power? Riley, what would be 25 or 25 as a base of 5? 5 to the what power? Uh, 5 to 5 squared. 5 squared. So we have 5 to the second power. So what we have now created is we have created a like basis. If these two bases are, are alike and we have equality here, then this will tell us that x is equal to a value of 2. Which, once again, I think you could have figured that out as we I didn't even have to go through those steps. But when we go to our next problem, it's not going to be quite as easy. We have 5 to the x is equal to 1 over 125. How can we write 125 as a base of 5? Isaac Phillips, how can we write 25 as a base of 5? 5 cubed. 5 to the third power. So we have 5 to the x is equal to 1 over 5 cubed. Now, using our knowledge of exponents, I need to get 5 to the x is equal to 5 to some power. Well, how can we take this and move it up top? Angelique, what, can we, what, exponent, what can we do with the exponent of 3 to be able to move that up top? Do you remember? Um, do we multiply it to the top? No, we don't multiply it by the top. We can do something to the exponent. Do you remember? Hmm. No. No. Anybody remember? What do we do with that? How can we move it from the bottom up to the top? What can we do with the exponent? Do you change the sign? Change the sign to what? Uh, negative. Negative. So we have to the negative third power. Very good. So we have 5 to the x is equal to 5 to the negative third power, which allows us to then say if our bases are equal, then our exponents must be equal. So x is equal to negative 3. Okay, we have 5 to the x minus 3 is equal to 625. Once again, we want to rewrite this 
so we have a like basis because we want to utilize this property right here. We want to use this property right here. If we have a like basis, then their x and we have equality, then the exponents must be equal. So we want to write 625 as a base of 5. 625 would be 5 to the what power? And some of the time you're going to have to sit there and uh, maybe click and collect to the calculator. 625 would be 5 to the what power? Vivi, did you ever make it? Yeah. All right, 5 to the what power? Good morning, by the way. Good morning. Five to the fourth power. Five, five to the fourth power. So we have five to the x minus three is equal to five to the fourth power. So if my bases are equal, if my bases are equal, which we have there, then and we have equality here, that means our exponents must be equal. So we have x minus three is equal to four, so x is equal to a value of seven. We will continue to challenge here. We have 5 to the x is equal to, well, 125 we already did up top here. We said it was 5 cubed. Isaac said it was 5 cubed, so we have 5 to the third. But we have to the x power. Sorry, that's a minus 6 there. Don't try to do too many things at one time here. We have 5 to the x minus 6 is equal to 5 to the third to the x power. We have a power to a power. When we have an exponent to an exponent, L, what do we have to do with our two exponents here? Do you remember? We have an exponent to an exponent. What do we have to do with them? Do you add them? No, we don't add them. If I had x squared times x cubed, that would give us x to the 2 plus 3, which is x to the 5th. But when we have x squared cubed, what do we do? Multiply. Multiply them. So this would give us x to the 6th power. So we're going to multiply here. So we have 5 to the x minus 6 is equal to 5 to the 3 x power. Now this gives us an equation that we could solve. Where x minus 6 is equal to 3 x. Solving for x, we could subtract our x, divide by our new coefficient. Olivia, did you make it in then? That is, what do we come down to? We have x minus 6 is equal to 3x. What do we come down to? That is. Would it be negative 3x? No, we need to solve this equation. We have x minus 6. What do we got to do with the x here? We have to solve this equation. I don't know. We have x minus 6 is equal to 3x. Need to give, how would you get this x over to the other side? How can we get this over to here? Uh, add. Yeah, I have addition of x there. Oh, subtract. So we subtract x, subtract x. So we have negative 6 is equal to 2x, and then what? Then you... Uh, then you would add the 6. Yeah. Have 2 times x is equal to negative 6. Oh, you, you divide the 2x. So we get a value of x equals negative 3. 
once again, you're trying to solve an equation here. You're trying to create an equation to be able to solve. Uh, let's see here. We have 9 to the x plus 2 is equal to 81 to the x. We can solve this two different ways. If we use the base of 9, how can we rewrite 81 as a base of 9? Brenna, 81 as a base of 9 would be what? 9 squared. 9 squared to the x power. Okay, go ahead. We have an exponent to a power to a power. Go ahead and multiply it and solve for your value of x. Brandon, what do you get for x then? x equals 2. x equals the value of 2, that's correct. Last one. I'm going to throw one other one in on this also. Just challenge us a little bit. Okay, we have square root of 5. Okay, how can we write square root of 5 as a base of 5? Okay, write 5 as a base of 5. How do we deal with the square root? Then we have 125. How can I rewrite 5 as a base of 5? And then go ahead and write your equation and solve the equation. Test, test, how can you write square root of 5 as an exponent? 5 to the what power? Root 2. Not that 2. How do we deal with the square root? Because if I write 5 squared, that gives me 25. But that gives me the value of 25. I want the square root of 5. Do you remember? Like, no. Kirsten, how do you write square root of five as a right as an exponent? Uh, you write it to the one half power. Yeah, we have the one tooth power. So we have five cubed for the one twenty five. So we have one half is equal to three x. We have to divide by 3, which is like multiplying by 1 third. What do we get for the value of x? Marissa, Marissa, what do you come up with? Uh, x equals 1 6. 1 6. That's correct. All right, I'm going to take a look at one last problem here. Oh, let's see here. 25 to the x plus 1 power is equal to 125 
to the, oh, let's see here, 2x plus 3 power. There we go. There's our challenge problem for the day. Okay, first rewrite as a base of 5. Just rewrite as a base of 5. Okay, and hopefully we know we have squared and cubed here. Now what we have to watch out for here is we have a power to a power. We have a power to a power, and, and what L told us before is that we have to multiply them. But you have to watch when you multiply, because you need to multiply the entire thing together. So we have two quantity of x plus 1. We need to quantify the x plus 1 is equal to 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 3. So now this turns into a distributive property. So we'll go ahead and distribute out over the parentheses and solve for x. Angelique, what do you come down to? Negative 7 over 4. Negative 7 over 4. So we are creating, creating equations to solve here, but we're using our exponential idea to be able to create these equations. And this chapter is full of logarithms. Once, once we get into what we're dealing with tomorrow, um, we will be dealing with logarithms. Um, but it's all exponential functions. When you're dealing with logarithms, those are exponential functions. And this is just a good little review for us of how to deal with exponents a little bit. I'll review some of our properties of exponents where when I have something... 1 over, when I'm dealing with 1 over 20, 125, how can I write that as an exponent? Well, that's 5 to the negative third power. Okay, when I deal with a square root, I take it to the 1 half power. Um, so there's different aspects with respect to properties. I have a power to a power. I have to multiply when I have a power to a power. Um, some properties of exponents that we'll be continually, continually continue to deal with. Okay, what I will do is I will stop there, which gets you a lot of time, another half hour of the classroom, um, to be able to work on the worksheet. You only have nine problems to do there, or you have three graphs to work with. Um, what I ask there is, is plot three points for two to the x, and this use your translations and redraw your graphs in there. So look at what is your translation, and then move your move your graph that you just plotted the three points uh, to new points. Move them up one, or to the right one, or to the left one, or reflect them, and redraw your graphs. Okay, problems two through seven down at the bottom. Um, you're doing what we just did here with respect to the exponents. Um, you're rewriting as a base, uh, a like basis. And once you rewrite as an alike base, then you want to be able to 
uh, solve an equation. Uh, set up an equation and solve. Once you set up the equation, the equations are pretty easy to work with at that point. Okay, tomorrow we'll come in, we'll deal with logarithms. Once again, we'll do the 815 to 9, 815, I'm sorry, 830. 830 to 915. We will have class. Um, and we'll be going into the next section of notes that we have with respect to logarithms. Um, so that will be tomorrow. Questions that you have? I have a question over the notes or the problems we just went over. Yeah, which one? The one, the middle one on the left. Uh, this one right here? Yeah. Yeah. So we dealt with 625, but there's an X there. I know. that should There should be a separation there. I'm just asking here, oh, what okay. is X equal? It didn't space out very well. Okay. So you don't worry about that X. That was a typo. Okay. Any other questions? Okie dokie, QED, I is done. Miss you guys. Um, get your homework done. You have, once again, you have about a half hour left in the classroom here uh, to be able to get your work done. Uh, the, the other choice I had would be to double up on notes a day and then give you more homework for the weekend and, and to work on. I found this would be a little bit more efficient. We'll split this up into two different days. Um, on Tuesday, we'll do our last set of notes with respect to logarithms, um, but then we'll just start doing some review for all over the, all over the logarithms on Thursday, Friday, and then test it up the following week. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, once again, feel free to email me or stick around in the classroom afterwards. Uh, other than that, I'm out of here. See y'all. Take care of yourself.